Chair, chair. There we go. The monitor on the railing needs to be on too. The big one here. There should be a remote to turn that on and off. Bear with us, we're having a bit of technical difficulties, but we'll get this straightened out. Just because that's the way it goes. All right, good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, first of all, and most importantly, we have Vacation Bible School this week. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening out of Lost Island. I'm looking for somebody who's got some extra booster seats to transport smaller children in safe car seats because we've got several kids that need rides and several kids that need booster seats because I don't have any anymore. All my kids are taller than I am, so I don't have any booster seats anymore. So if somebody's got some we can borrow, uh, that would be great. You can either bring them to church tomorrow or Tuesday during the day, and I will return them to you on Thursday. If there's somebody who can help drive kids back and forth, I don't know how many kids need a ride just yet, but uh, if there's somebody who's willing to drive back and forth, uh, you can meet here at 5 on Tuesday uh, to help do that. Uh, that would be great also. And today we're blessing the quilts and skit and skits. Quilts and kits for Lutheran World Relief. Those will be packed up tomorrow and then shipped up to Minneapolis to go to the four corners of the world where they go. Uh, it's one of my favorite Sundays of the year, and I'm glad that we're able to do this this year. We weren't able to do it last year. We are also going to, uh, before the close of service, bless a prayer quilt for Janice Campbell, and that will be taken to the back, and you can pray over and tie a knot as you leave today. Anything else we need to highlight before we begin? Yes, Diane. Okay, I just received a call from Alice Christensen's daughter, I believe, and she fell a couple of weeks ago and broke both of her arms, and she's out at Lakeside right now, so she's needing some extra prayers. Actually, she's in the hospital right now. But she is, okay. Yeah, they called me yesterday, and she was in the ER because she fell again. But uh, yes, we'll add her to the prayer list. It looks like Teresa's coming yeah, up to say right. something to you. If you don't find booster seats, call Jesse at the theater, okay? Because we've got several. Okay. Whoops. That was not going to Okay. I just want to say a big thank you to anyone and everyone who donated their time, materials, kits, the quilts, packing of the quilts, getting them to Spencer. Any monetary donations this year, a huge thank you goes to everybody that helped in any way, shape, or form this year to get these quilts up to the cities and where they need to go this year. Thank you. How many do we have, do you know? Teresa. What's that? How many do we have, do you know? I don't know yet, no. Okay. It was in the newsletter that we had over 200. And... Angie? I just want to say that tomorrow night we're loading the trailer at 6 o'clock, so if anybody would want Okay, we're loading the trailer at about 6 o'clock tomorrow night, uh, so if anybody wants to come help, many hands make light works, and you're welcome to come and help us do that. Um, once, once I get all the numbers, I'll give that report to okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Last I heard, talking to the morning quilters, we had over 250 quilts that are being shipped off this week. So, all right. See no more announcements, then let us rise and begin our worship with the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page 77 or on the screen in front of you. We begin this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, 
God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our gathering hymn, which is eminently appropriate for the blessing of the quilt Sunday, is number 370 in the green hymnal, Blessed Be the Tide of Minds. <laughs> We celebrate generosity. We give you thanks for the fellowship of all who work together to make these quilts and kits. 
the laughter, the shared stories, the joy of crafting something with one's hands and hearts for another, and the time to reflect and to wonder about those who receive these gifts. We celebrate community. We send these quilts as a sign of God's love and blessing for each person who receives one, trusting that their quilt will be a source of comfort and hope in the midst of disaster and fear, a symbol of Christ's love to those who suffer, a reminder that each recipient is a beloved child of God. We pray that these quilts and kits will serve a useful purpose in the life of those who receive them, that they may bring warmth in the cold, shelter from the sun and heat, a wall for a home, a carrier for a few precious belongings. May these be a step in the recovery of one's life and a message of care from someone who may they never meet. We celebrate hope in the midst of life's trials. We remember those who received our quotes in the past and pray that their lives have returned to stability. We celebrate the gift of life. And now, O oh God, we ask you to bless these, the fruits of our labors and the whole mission of Lutheran World Relief, that together we may minister to our neighbors in need. Bless all who give and all who are received, as we are sown together in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord.
be seated for the reading of the lesson. Who is the head, 
into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the Alleluia response.
to places around the world, to people in need, who need a warm quilt to sleep under, or a quilt to make a tent out of so they can be safe from the sun and the wind and the rain, all that kind of stuff. These are visible signs of God's love. Okay, would you pray with me? Please join me. You guys repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring us for us. Thank you for sharing your love with us. Help us to share your love with other folks around us. Amen. All right, you can put the quilts back on the pulpit here. They don't have to be folded real nice. They'll get refolded when we when we put them down. And thanks for coming up. It works better if somebody comes up with that. So I appreciate it. And like I said, it's, I'm glad to see you guys. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Today we enter into the second week of the discourse on bread. These sayings that make up the end of the first third of the Gospel of John. And as he did in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John with the, women at the, with the woman at the well in the discussion of the water of life, Christ invites us to open our hearts and minds to better understand who he is and how it operates. But today he's using the image of bread. And I think this is no accident. Because we all know that things like water and bread are essential for life. And so is Christ. In using these common things that we all ready to be understand, understand to be essential, by using water and bread, we can begin to understand how Christ might be and surely is essential for life. This is one of the common threads of the Gospel of John, that we come to know not only who Christ is, but how essential Christ is. He's not just somebody who appears on the scene and we can follow him if we want to, or if we choose to. Here we begin to see and we'll continue to explore over the next few weeks how Christ is essential for a deep and full and meaningful life. And so in today's account, which takes place immediately after the feeding of the 5,000, we are put in the position of those in the crowd. And we are put in that position because the disciples don't appear at all. So we, we are the crowd today. We are the ones who are seeking Jesus. And we come often when we don't even know why we come or understand what it is that we need. Jesus himself says the same thing to the crowds because he says they're really coming because they just got fed with the five loaves and the two fish. Their needs have been satisfied. But they're still seeking. They're still coming. There is something within us. Perhaps we can call it the prodding of the Spirit that seeks after Christ. There is something within us that compels us to search for deep, deeper meaning and deeper purpose, even when we are not aware of what is happening. And so we come today. We come with the crowds. We come as one seeking. We come as one with questions. And we come as one in need of healing and hope. Those who hear Jesus when this account first happened. Want something that they can do. Because they ask. 
What can we do, or what must we do, to do the work of God? This is perhaps a common question, and it is sometimes our question as well, because we seem hardwired to ask this question. There must be something that we need to do. Or there must be something that we can do to open the gates of heaven, to earn God's grace and God's trust. There is something within us that distrusts the common refrain of Scripture to rest in faith, to trust in Christ, and simply to believe. And we distrust it because we've been taught by our own experiences to be all too wary of things that seem too simple. And at least initially, we prefer action from Jesus, instruction on what we can do, rather than remaining with Him, rather than abiding with Him. Yet this is in large part what these bread discourses from the Gospel of John and our text for today in particular urge us to do. They urge us to simply remain with Christ. They urge us not to focus or to worry over much about what we must do, but to sit in the gift of grace. And as we sit in the gift of grace, we begin to accept it for what it is. A gift. A gift from God closely akin to the manna that God gave his people in the wilderness when they were complaining about being hungry. A gift that sustained their life while at the same time drawing them closer to God Himself. And God's grace in Christ does the same thing. It sustains our life and draws us, even compels us, to come closer to God Himself and to begin to know as deeply and fully as God knows. Jesus says at the close of our gospel for today, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now, anybody who has teenagers knows that Jesus probably isn't talking about physical hunger and physical thirst. In fact, my boys, who are all teenagers, heard me practicing, and they said, Dad, you know that's not true. We're going to be hungry again in five minutes. <laughs> but Jesus isn't talking about physical hunger. He's talking about that hunger that comes deep from the soul. Hunger that God can only satisfy. And there are a couple things going on here. First of all, Jesus is claiming his divine identity in a way that he has not yet done in the Gospel of John. Now, we know who he is because we've seen the great prologue of the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. It doesn't get more simple than that. Here, Jesus is claiming his divine identity using the same words and the same title that God himself used when calling Moses through the burning bush. And telling Moses to go to God's people with a proclamation of freedom. And Moses said, Who shall I tell that people has sent you? And God said, Tell them I am has sent you. So those who heard Jesus say, I am the bread of life, would have heard this claiming of the divine identity. And in claiming this I am, we are called to see in Christ all that God is. And we are given a vivid and powerful reminder of exactly who this Christ is. And we are reminded in this ancient account, which is just one of many, that God cares for and feeds and brings life into the midst of his people, providing them with all that is needful for life, both in terms of the daily bread for which we pray so often, but also in terms of the life in and connection to God himself, which opens the door 
for a deeper and richer and fuller life than we can ever know or imagine apart from God. I am the bread of life. I am the Son of Man. I am the one who is speaking to you face to face, says our God. And we at this end of history, here in this account, echoes of what for us will become the Eucharist, the holy meal of communion, which we celebrate today. And when we hear this, we equate the bread of life with the bread of heaven, which we receive at this altar, and rightfully so. For this is the bread of life that Christ talks of. This is the bread of life that Christ received, reveals himself to be. This is the bread of life where we hear again the words given and shed for you. For the forgiveness of sin, which sets us free from bondage to sin, sets us free to live in service to neighbor, sets us free to live as full children of God. I am the bread of life. Here we begin to get a glimpse of what that is. And we are invited to take that glimpse and ponder it. We are invited to take that glimpse and grow in faith and love and understanding. And it is all too tempting sometimes to think that those who don't get it, who don't understand what Jesus is talking about, to be slow and dull. And to be fair, sometimes Jesus' comments lead us to conclude that but in the Gospel of John, all too often, these misunderstandings frequently lead us into some of the most memorable and beloved teachings of Christ. I am the bread of life. We don't have to get it. We don't have to understand it. We are invited to trust. Invited to rest. Invited to have faith. Because ultimately, it isn't about us getting Jesus. It is about the fact that Jesus gets us. It's about the fact that Jesus invites us, maybe even compels us, to eat of this bread of life, to drink of the water of life, to be drafted to the vine of life. Jesus gets us. Jesus loves us and invites us to rest in him and to live, move, and have our being in the source of life. Amen. Our song of the day is Breathe. Is it working? It's not playing. It's not playing. All right, then would you please rock and join me in saying the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we confess 
that we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit, we now offer our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts that you provide for the carrying out of this work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of creation, you command the clouds above and cause the winds to blow in the heavens. Watch over the deserts and the wilderness places. Regenerate the rainforests, defend species at risk of extinction, and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Be with those who tend and till the land and bring forth the harvest. Help us to share in the abundance that you bring, and make us good stewards of that which you have placed in our care. Hear us, O God. You are mercy and great. God of discipleship, you summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill in all who govern your patience and your wisdom when they are confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking after what promotes the well-being of the whole community. Grant wisdom to those who are in positions of leadership and bless their work. Especially we ask you to bless the work of our missionary Courtney Davis and her work in Papua New Guinea. Our companion synods, the Southern Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Chile. The pastors and congregations of the Western Iowa Synod, especially those who are seeking new pastors at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of help and healing, you draw near to those who cry out to you for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing and accompany those who are in prison. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world for all who are ill of body, mind, or spirit. Today we offer prayers for Carol Walker, for Carol Ritchie, for Alice Christensen, for Bridget Johnson, for Joe Muir, for Bill Ellingrod, for Dave Zanfis, for Don Crowell, Roger Will, Bob Morrison, Jr., Linda Jurdy, Phyllis Schroeder, Janice Campbell, Teresa Jensen, Garwood Anderson, Connie Yonker, Lucille Anderson, and those we now name either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy and Gracious God, you receive all who come seeking. 
the sign of grace. We ask that you make this congregation a place of hospitality for those who are accustomed to rejection, for those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere. Help us to prepare a welcome for them in the name of Christ. Help us to prepare a welcome for the communities in which you've placed us and the people that darken our doors. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of beginnings and endings, Alpha and Omega, the entirety of our existence is in your care, and you provide the food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with those who have gone before and feast together at your heavenly banquet table. Today we are mindful of the family and friends of Pastor Bill Smith, who served Lost Island Lutheran in the mid-80s, asking that you comfort his family and friends as they mourn his passing. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, and we ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment to greet one another safely with the sign of Christ's peace. Peace to those who are here. Peace to those who are watching. And peace to those who will be listening later. Let us now sing the offertory as we prepare to give thanks to God for the gifts that he gives and the portion that we return.
our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is now prepared. This is Christ's table, and he welcomes all who are baptized and believe to join in the feast. Today you will come forward at the direction of the ushers and spread out along the table, taking your wafer, which is in the in the um, cupcake cup, and the glass of wine or grape juice nearest to the cupcake cup that you take, and you will eat and drink, and then I will give each table a blessing before they return to their seats. But you may come for all is now ready.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the bread of life, strengthen you and keep you in his grace and peace. Amen. Amen.
us free. Gracious and ever-loving God, you call upon those who are ill to pray for healing and for grace and presence from you. And we do so now on behalf of our sister Janice, asking that you bless this quilt, that for her it may be a visible sign of not only your love, but our love as a community of faith of which she is a part. As she wraps herself in this quilt, may she feel herself wrapped in the prayers of this community and in your love, and may she be sustained and nourished by your presence in whatever is to come. In your name we pray. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.